1,500 years ago in Europe, if you were an eagle and you flew over the mountains, you would see a valley heavily wooded. And at the end of the valley, you would see a fort, a red fort. And in the red fort was the red king. And the red king was getting old. And he called his three sons to him, uh, Vladimir, Ivan, and Pietro. And he said, boys, boys, I am dying. My time has run out. And so, boys, I want you to tell me what you will do with your lives. While all the boys were so upset, and Vladimir said, my father, because I am the eldest, I will become the king of the Red Fort, and I hope to rule as wise as you. Good, said the king. Ivan, sir, I am the second, so I will leave the Red Fort. I will go to another place. I will marry a princess, and she and I will become queen and king of that new place. Good, I am pleased, my son. And you, my little pigeon, my little Pietro, what will you do? And Pietro said, Father, don't die, don't die. But Pietro, everyone has to die. F not me, Father. I am going to find a place where I can live forever. Oh, Pietro, your heart will be broken on such a quest, but you may go. And so they got a good horse, loads of provisions in the packs, and off he went. He rode out of the Red Fort, and it took him a day and a half to ride out of the valley. It took him another two weeks to go over the mountains as he ventured forth to try and find a place where he could live forever. He came across an enormous forest. People said, this is the biggest forest in the world. So he rode, and he rode for half a year through the forest until he got to the middle of the forest. And there in the middle of a forest was a bird, a parrot, high up on the tree. And Peter looked at the parrot and said, Sir, sir, the parrot looked down. You are very courteous, young man. What would you like to know? Sir, is this a place where I can live forever? Oh, yes, said the parrot. Let me tell you how long you can live here, because if you live like me, I will peck every single branch, every twig and every tree in the biggest forest in the world. And only then, when it's all been reduced to nothing, only then will I die. And Peter said, this place you can't live forever. It means you will die one day. And the parrot said, but it'll take so long. I don't care, said Peter. And he rode away. He rode away for many years until he got to a place of seven mountains. And the seven mountains surrounded a copper castle, which glowed in the sun. Peter uh, galloped down to the copper castle. Maybe this is a place I can live forever. And as he got there, he saw that etched into every wall, every door, every building in the copper castle was his name, Peter. No one else was around. He dismounted and went into the copper palace. And there she was, the queen. And the queen said, Peter, I've been waiting for you for so long. Stay with me, Pieter, stay with me. No, no, I, I won't stay with you because I'm looking for a place where I can live forever. Well, this is it, said the queen. You can live forever here. Look, do you see those seven mountains outside? When they are worn down with the wind and the rain and the snow, when they are worn down level and to nothing, only then will we die. Well, Peter said, I, I can't stay here. I cannot stay here because you've just told me I won't live forever here. 
and getting on his horse and galloping out. In his ears, he heard her shouting, Pieter, I've waited. Pieter, come back. Pieter, come back. Well, Pieter, he galloped for seven more years until he came to the Valley of the North Wind, which is right at the end of the world. And it is a dark valley. The North Wind buffed all the way through the valley. And Pieter asked the North Wind, Sir, sir, can I live forever here? And the North Wind said, Yes, Pieter, here you will never die. Well, what if mountains get worn away? You will never die. What if forests get pecked away? You will never die. Here. You will live forever. Oh, Pieter said, fantastic. With your permission, I will live in your valley. You can do. You can hunt on every valley uh, side. You can hunt deer. You can hunt all sorts of game and wildlife. But you must not go ever to the dark part of the valley. I won't, said Pieter. And for years, he lived in the valley. He hunted deer, and he lived by himself. Uh, he rejoiced in the flowers and the beauty of this paradise, and he would be living forever. But on one day, he began to hunt a deer. As he hunted, he jumped over a bough underneath a branch. The white tail of the deer bobbed back and forth. The deer was going towards the dark part of the valley, towards the darkness. The deer disappeared into the darkness, and Pieter pulled up his horse. But as he did so, his heel touched the darkness. And immediately, he was overcome with a new sense of discontent unhappiness, longing, yearning. He was homesick. He'd never felt that before in all the years that he'd lived in the valley. And he tried to stay in the valley, but this feeling of homesickness overwhelmed him. And one day he decided that he would leave the valley. And so he got on his horse. He said farewell to the north wind and thanked the North Wind so much for his generosity and began to gallop out of the valley. As soon as he galloped out of the valley, he, he got another feeling, a feeling that he was being followed. He rode on, he rode on mile after mile after mile, and every, at the end of every day, he got off his horse. He would hide behind a rock, he would wait, for the person who was following him. No one ever came, but he couldn't get rid of that feeling. On and on and on he rode for many years until he came to the Valley of the Seven Hills. But the Seven Hills were not there anymore. The Seven Hills had been eroded away by rain and sand and wind and movement. But the Copper Castle was still there. And he galloped down to the Copper Castle, galloped across the drawbridge into the courtyard, dismounted. And there she was, the princess. And she said, Pieter, I've been waiting for you all of this time. And now that you're here, it's too late. And with that, she collapsed into dust and all the copper fell down into dust. Pieter, frightened, got back on his horse and he galloped back. He wanted to get home, wanted to get to the Valley of the Red King again. He passed through a desert. This desert wasn't here before and it took many years to get through the desert. But in the middle of the desert, there was one twig. And on that twig was a parrot. And the parrot looked up and the parrot said, I told you, Peter, you could have lived here forever. I'm going to die now. This is the last twig to peck. 
And Peter galloped on, leaving the parrot to peck that twig. On and on and on he went, all was looking round, all was having the feeling of being followed. And at last he got to his mountains, and he started to ride up to the mountains, but then he jumped off his horse, because the road was black. Not only was the road were black, there was dragons. He hid behind a rock, and the dragons came past. <coughs> The dragons were strange. They had noise. They had wheels. He knew that. And the wheels had rubber on them. He knew that the dragons weren't going to hurt him. So he led his horse into the valley. All of the woods had gone. And the valley was now carpeted with buildings, towers. And it was noisy. And as he went down, there were millions of people. He led his horse, but as soon as his horse touched the edge of that valley, the horse fell dead. And Peter went on and on. Strangers came past in different clothes. They ignored him. He put his hand out. Sir, can you help me? What do you want? Where is the Red Fort? <laughs> the Red Fort? That's just a legend, boy. I think it used to be over there. On and on and on he came to the oldest part of this magnificent city. And he sat on a stone, an old stone by a fountain. And he recognized the stone. It was one of the stones from the Red Fort. I'm here, I'm here, but where is the Red Fort? And then he saw her. He saw the woman that had been following him all those years. She was a tall, beautiful woman with black hair, wearing black. And she had with her a cart. And the cart was piled high with shoes. And the woman said, Peter, at last, you've stopped. Peter, I've been looking for you for years. I've worn out all of these shoes following you. But why? Why did you follow me, said Pieter? The Red Fort is no more. I know. Time has passed. Pieter, come to me. Who are you? Pieter, I am death. Come to me. And Pieter walked into her arms, and death lovingly folded him. And that is the end of the story.